Ballooning is often a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It's a lot of fun with the right operator. And if you get to ride in one, you may cherish the memories forever. Hot air balloons are the new form of flight which moves with the wind. And here's tonight's success factor with Riz Jiwa. <laughs> Five thirty a.m. Good. Well, welcome to the launch site, folks. My name is Riz. Uh, I'll be flying it today. Captain Riz Jiwa gives passengers that are about to board the hot air balloon a brief at the launch site. First time for everybody. Yes. yes. What a coincidence. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Cool. Inside. And I'll see you guys again in a few minutes once we're ready to get going. Thank okay. You. Super. Thank you. So please, yeah, don't delay. You want to be over that side in the next sort of couple of minutes. Okay. 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 Next is a safety check warmer air is less dense and it rises so what we do is we capture that warmer air within what's called the envelope the top the big bulbous part of the balloon um, and once you've captured that air and you can maintain it at a higher temperature than the surrounding air it rises it's as simple as that and then flames from the hot air balloon burners light the darkness as the crews inflate their craft of course, safety is first, so everything starts with checks. You've got to make sure everything is 100% um, before we start doing anything. Um, and then uh, once that happens, uh, based on the weather of the day, we make a decision based uh, regarding how to load the basket, depending on how many passengers we're carrying. Uh, we want everything uh, nice and even, balanced, etc. The first pink tongues of sunlight flicker across the skies as the hot air balloon fills, then rises. The adventure begins just before dawn. So the wind is our um, best friend and uh, also can be a problem for us. If we have too much wind, we can't fly because you, you have less control because our control is based on the wind direction. So navigating in any direction is up to the wind. Suspended in a basket beneath the rainbow-colored canopy, you're off for a wildlife viewing adventure with an entirely different perspective. How high up are we now? So we're just about 1,500 feet above the ground, approximately uh, 6,500 feet above sea level. Um, and this is the Masamara. You know, that's glory. We caught up with Captain Riz, a household name when he was the voice of daily sports updates on Nairobi's Capital FM and Nation FM radio stations. Well, Capital FM was uh, fun radio days and um, yeah, I did the sport. Uh, I had a sport um, show on Saturday afternoon along with uh, my colleague then, Sean Carvelis, who's still on radio. Um, and yeah, it was uh, the sport with Riz Jiwa. Left radio simply because it stopped be being fun for me. And the next option for me, uh, based on my interests and what I felt like I wanted to do that would be fun, was to get out of the city. So how did he get started in ballooning? I got uh, into tourism operations out here and uh, managing a camp and so on. And during that time, I started to meet uh, some of the balloon pilots and... Um, that they live and work out here uh, and they got me into it. There is no formalized balloon training in Kenya. Uh, the, the regulations don't exist currently. Um, so for now, really, the only options available for anybody who might, might be interested in, uh, in becoming a balloon pilot is to go abroad. Uh, and in that respect, I bit the bullet, went to the US, did my training, came back and pretty much uh, right away got offered a, a position in a balloon company. His career in tourism started as a camp manager, guide and host. Riz is no stranger to sharing his passion for the wilderness and how to enjoy it best. Communicating with people is probably one of the most important or most challenging aspects of being a balloon pilot um, in a ride setting. If I was flying by myself, it wouldn't matter. But when I have 16 people on board that have to be safe, it's extremely important how clearly I communicate with them. In his own words, he's a safari guide that flies. A hill down there that slopes down to the right. Do you see that? We call that the sleeping warrior. Maybe you can see why. We're flying over exotic animals. Um, these are 
animals that some people only ever will see in a, in a zoo. Um, for, for me, uh, I'm privileged to be able to share my love of this place with the passengers, with the people who visit us. Here you experience beautiful silence as you float above the plains, the forest and the rivers of the Maasai Mara. I ask Riz what are his most memorable experiences in the open sky. For anybody watching this, um, what would they experience flying in a hot air balloon? There's only one word really that I can use, it's magical. Um, there's, oh, yeah. It's very hard to describe the feeling you get when you're just floating through the air. Um, I, for example, there's lots of people who come out and they say they're afraid of heights, but they, they do a flight in a balloon and they just don't understand why they have no sense of fear when it comes to that. It's the closest we'll ever get to feeling like a bird. The flight lasts an hour or so, drifting wherever the air currents take you and with ample opportunities for photography and video filming. What happens in the case of an emergency? Well, it's pretty easy in a balloon. You just land. <laughs> um, where we fly is, uh, is so open that we and we can land pretty much anywhere. We're trained to handle any situations that can occur. Generally speaking, if it's weather related, it means you might get a lot of wind or a lot of wind speed comes up um, while you're flying and uh, you have to deal with that. And that just basically, it's all about making good decisions to start with. Currently, there are only six Kenyan licensed hot air balloon pilots and seven hot air balloon companies. You have to make a lot of commitments and a lot of sacrifices to be able to live out here. It's not for everyone. I've had people have arrived here as pilots, they've lasted one week and they've said no thank you and get back on a plane and they go home. Um, because there's no cinema on Friday night, there's no ice cream on Sunday afternoon. There's, you know, it's a different way of life. Um, and it's a tough way of life. In Kenya, hot air balloons only fly in the Maasai Mara. At the moment, the only place that there is a regular um, ride balloons, that means where you can, a passenger, somebody who chooses to fly can come up pay the money and go for a balloon flight is the Masai Mara. Everywhere else in Kenya uh, is, it is possible and you would have to go through the process of getting approvals from the Civil Aviation Authority here uh, and very, very likely the landowners or the, the whoever's in charge of the area that you're flying in or over. Um, so unfortunately for us, Kenya is still quite far behind the rest of the world in terms of um, access to aviation. It's very, very highly regulated. <laughs> Stay in that position. God. There we go, folks. <laughs> I just flew in a hot air balloon and the sense of fulfillment you get when you fly in one is incomparable to anything else. It should be on your bucket list. The balloon safari finishes with a flourish. This is a tradition the world over. You toast your return to earth with a delicious breakfast complete with champagne. The breakfast is cooked wherever you land. The words, you don't know what you're missing. Uh, come jump up into my mind straight away. People need to realize that there's so much that this country has to offer. Uh, we have an incredible attraction that is open to everybody. The balloon safari ends with a game drive. Hiya! We're in the Maasai Mara and look how beautiful Kenya is. This is a herd of elephants and they're making their way right past our vehicle and I'm getting to witness all of this. Wow. Oh look at the baby. Look at the baby. Look at the baby. Oh. 